Hi, in this video, we're going to be, this series of videos, we're going to be working through a GCSE paper. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, then compare your solutions. Each of the videos is going to be about 20, 30 minutes or so. It should give you about an hour's worth of fairly focused revision. If you're not sure about anything, always add a comment. I'll come back to you and I'll look forward to seeing you inside the video. Okay, for this paper, we're going to be looking at the Edexcel Mathematics Foundation tier, and it's from June 2017, paper one. So this is a non-calculator version. Please do stop the video, have a go at each of the questions, and then compare your solutions. So let's have a look then at um, question number one. Find the value of two to the power of four. Well, basically, that means two times two times two times two, and that's going to give you a total value of 16. Hopefully that's okay for you. Let's look at question number two. So it says, write that number correct to three decimal places. Well, the third decimal place is going to be a four. And the question is, does that four change? Well, yes, it does. It's going to change to a five because the number after it is five or above. So the actual answer to this one will be 7.26. Five. Okay, let's move on then to question number three. And we've got to simplify 7 times e times f times h. So let's look at the numbers first. Well, 7 times 8 is going to be 56. And then I've got multiplied by e and multiplied by f. OK, and then part B of the same question, it says solve this. Well, this is a little bit unusual, a little bit tricky. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the second one to a top heavy fraction. So I get x over 5 equals 5 over 2. And then really, it's just a case of cross multiplying. So if I cross multiply, I get 5 times 5, which is 25. And then I get 2 times x, which is 2x. Well, 2x equals 25. And then Therefore, if I divide through by 2, I get x equals 12.5, which is the answer to part B of this question. If you're not sure about anything, always please do let me know in the comments. I've got uh, playlists on the channel that I can also send through to you with more practice questions. OK, let's move on then to a very typical question. Uh, write this fraction as a percentage. Well, as you know, percent basically means out of 100. So what they're saying is take that four fifths and make it equal to something out of 100. Well, if I multiply that by 20 and multiply the top by 20, I get 80. 80 out of 100 is exactly the same as say 80 percent. And that would be the answer to question number four. OK, let's move on then to question number five. Please do stop the video. Have a go at this particular question. We're told, oh, we're asked to work out 60 percent of 70. Well, if we know 60 percent of 70, we can just work out 10 percent of 70 is going to be equal to seven. OK, so therefore 60% is going to be multiplying this by 6, which will give us 60%. And therefore, I've got to then multiply the 7 by 6 as well. That's going to give me 42. And that's the answer to question number five. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. Let's move on then to a probability type question. It says Sammy spins a fair four sided spinner. And the important thing here is a fair spinner. So the probability of it landing on any one of the four sides is exactly the same. They're all 25 percent or one quarter. So it says on the probability scale, mark with a cross the probability the spinner will land on a B. Well, there's actually two Bs. There's one here and one here, so it's going to land on B half the time. Or if you prefer, two out of the four times, which is exactly the same, saying half. So I can put an X there on the half. And then it says at the bottom there, on the probability scale, mark with a cross, the probability the spinner will land on an F. OK, it's not going to land on an F because there isn't one. So therefore, we'd put it down as zero, which is impossible for it to land on an F. And you will find probability questions do crop up quite a bit with these sorts of non-calculators as well worth practicing. OK, 
right, let's move on then to number seven. So Fahima buys uh, that. <laughs> okay, she's going to buy some bread rolls and ketchup and sausages. Okay, and she works out that one packet of sausages costs two pound thirty. Is it right? Okay, so let's have a look at what she actually spends. So two packets of bread roll costing one pound fifty for each packet. Well, that's going to be equal to three pounds that she actually spends on bread rolls, and then a bottle of ketchup. And that's going to cost £1.60. So in total, she's actually spent £4.60. OK. And then um, we've got to look at if she spent... Um, uh, if she, if she gets 30p change, okay, then she must have spent £9.70. I'll get there eventually. £9.70. So therefore, the sausage cost must be the difference between £9.70 and £4.60. So the actual total is going to be £9.70. Take away £4.60, and that means that for three packs of sausages, she would have spent £5.10. OK, so the question really is, is that one packet of sausage, does it cost £2.30? Well, if we divide £5.10 by three, because this is three packs, then what I'm actually going to get is £1.70. So no uh, I'm afraid Fatima is incorrect. It's actually in is not correct. Sorry about my awful writing here. It equals one pound seventy per pack. Okay, and that'll be perfectly fine to get you the full three marks on that particular question. Okay, let's move on then to question number eight, which is some fairly straightforward fractions. As you know, with fractions, what we generally tend to do is multiply across. Uh, so we've got five times three when we're multiplying, sorry, it's that's going to give me 15 and eight times four is going to be 32. And that's going to be absolutely fine. Okay, so for part B, we've got two fractions that we're subtracting. To subtract fractions, we need to make sure that the denominators are the same. So I'm going to make both of them 12. Okay, so I've got 3 times 4 is equal to 12, so therefore I'm going to multiply 2 times 4, and that's going to give me 8. Okay, and then I've got minus a quarter, so I've got, if you like, times 3, and that's going to give me a quarter, so therefore I've got 1 times 3, and that's going to give me 3 at the top here, so 8 minus 3 is going to give me 5 over 12. And that's the answer to that particular question. So the first one is 15 over 32, and the second one is 5 over 12. OK, let's move on then to question number 9. I'm going to aim for about 20 minutes on this particular video. Um, that'll give you hopefully about an hour's worth of fairly focused revision. OK, so Sean works for a company. This is one of these questions, very, very wordy. His normal rate of pay is £12 per hour. When Sean works for more than eight hours a day. He's paid overtime. OK, that's great. So on Monday, Sean worked for 10 hours. So let's look at what he would be paid for those eight hours that he worked. OK, so at eight hours, he's paid £12 per hour. So that's going to be 12 multiplied by eight. And that's going to give him £96. But he actually worked for a total of 10 hours. So he gets one and a quarter times his normal pay for that overtime. So one and a quarter is going to be um, £12 plus a quarter of £12, which is £3. So it's actually going to be £15 an hour for the additional two hours that he works. So two hours, and that's going to be 15 multiplied by two. That's going to be £30. So therefore, for his week's worth of work, he's going to get £126. And that would be the answer to question number nine. So lots and lots of words, not a massive amount of actual working out. OK, let's move on 
on then to number 10. So number 10, a farmer has 20 boxes of eggs, a six eggs in a box. Okay, so immediately, as soon as I see that, I'm thinking about um, how many eggs he's got all together. Well, he must have 120 eggs all together because he's got 20 boxes and six eggs each. So right as a ratio, the number of eggs in two boxes, which is going to be 12, to the total number of eggs, which is going to be 120. Okay, so let's have a look at that. And then it says, give your answer in its simplest form. So we've got eggs, okay, and that's going to be uh, 12, and then we've got, if you like, total, which is going to be 120. So in its simplest form, if I divide this through by 12, I'm going to get 1, and divide that through by 12, I'm going to get 10. So my answer is 1 to 10. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, hopefully that's OK for you. Let's move on then to question number 11. Okay, So here we are with uh, question number 11 and uh, it's fairly wordy. You need to spend a bit of time reading through this. But the first part of the question is how many square tiles are needed to make pattern number six? Well, if we look at each of the patterns, we've got pattern number one which has got one square tile and then pattern number two which has got four square tiles and pattern number three which has got nine square tiles so hopefully it'll be okay with you that what we're actually doing is we are squaring the pattern we're actually saying the number of square tiles is going to be n squared so n is the number of the pattern which let's say is two and then two squared is going to be four or the pattern number is three and three squared is nine so that's Therefore, for pattern number six, there's actually going to be 36 square tiles. OK, let's move on then to uh, a similar sort of idea, really, with how many circular tiles, which is part B. So if we look at um, pattern number one, well, we've got four circular tiles. If we look at pattern number two, well, we've got eight circular tiles. Pattern number three we've got 12 circular tiles. So what we're actually doing is we're multiplying the pattern by 4. So now it's 4n. OK, so rather than n squared, it's now 4 times the number of the pattern. So if the number of the pattern is going to be 20, therefore the number of tiles is going to be 80, and 80 would be the answer to part B. OK, let's have a look then at finally part C. It says, when the pattern number is odd, an odd number of square tiles is needed to make the pattern. OK, is he right? Well, yes, he is. If we go back to part one, what we basically said was that the number of square tiles is going to be n squared. OK, so it's the number of the pattern squared. So if I just make a note in here, part A, I'm going to put um, n squared and therefore yes because an odd number which is like the odd number of the pattern multiplied by an odd number so let's say 1 times 1 well that's going to be equal to 1 so therefore you're going to get an odd number of squares we can try also pattern number 3 well that's going to be squared that's going to be 9 or if you like you can have pattern number 5 and that's going to give you 25 so therefore they are all odd numbers okay hopefully that's okay for you if you're not sure about anything always add a comment below and we'll move on to question number 12 now question number 12 it says there are seven blue, four green, and six red pens. So in total, there are actually 17 pens in total, of which um, seven pens of them are blue. So one pen is taken at random from the box. The probability the pen is blue is going to be seven, which is blue pens out of 17 in total. And that would be the answer to that particular question. Okay, number 13, diagram shows a tree and a man. The man is of average height. Okay, write down an estimate for the real height in meters of the man. Okay, well, it is an estimate. I would say um, a couple of things perhaps to be aware of is that six foot 
is about 1.8 meters I would say six foot probably is taller than average so let's say 1.7 meters is perfectly fine for this particular question um, you don't need to there is quite a lot of scope you don't need to worry about it too much okay then it says find an estimate for the real height in meters of the tree well what I did is I measured the man as being one centimeter and therefore the tree if I measured it up was actually five centimeters so I've got a one to five ratio that I just used my ruler with so I've got one centimeter here and then I've got five centimeters there in this particular case but it is a one to five ratio so therefore if I know the man is 1.5 uh, 1.7 meters I've multiplied that one by 1.7 so if I multiply that 5 by 1.7, I'm going to get 8.5, and therefore my answer would be 8.5 metres for the height of the tree. Hopefully that's okay for you. We're going to do one more um, question. Information relating to Year 9 students from Howell School who are asked to choose one language to study. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky to show on the video, but hopefully you'll be okay for me uh, for it. So therefore, we've got 120 students that we're being asked to represent on a pie chart. Well, as you know, a pie chart has 360 degrees because there's 360 degrees in a circle. So what that means is if I divide it by 120, then each student is going to be three degrees. So what I do to get the angle is I multiply each of these by three degrees and that will then give me the angle that I'm going to use for French which is 168 degrees, for Spanish which is 120 degrees and for German which is 72 degrees. So it allows me to draw my pie chart. Now it's not going to be fantastically accurate but hopefully you'll get the idea that this is going to be 168 degrees and that's going to be French. Okay, and then I've got uh, roughly 120 degrees. Okay, you don't need to put the degrees when you're actually um, writing this or, or creating the actual pie chart, but that's going to be Spanish. Okay, and then finally the one that's left, which will be 72 degrees, is going to be German. Okay, now very typically with these types of questions, you might then get a comparison. Again, it's very difficult to see on the screen, but hopefully you'll get the idea. It says year nine students, this time from Lowry School, are being asked to choose one language. Okay, and the pie chart shows that French was chosen by more year nine students at Lowry School than at Howell School. Well, yes, on the surface of it. However, the problem you've got is that you just don't know how many students are in each school. So is Shamina right? Well, I'm afraid no, she's not. Okay, French was chosen by a higher proportion. Okay, sorry about my writing. Higher proportion in a Lowry school, but we don't know how many students. Okay, it could be that Lowry School has a hundred students, whereas Halley's School had a hundred and twenty, which is not too far adrift. But likewise, it could be ten students. Okay, so we don't know uh, how many students. Okay, hopefully that's okay for you. I'm going to leave the video at this particular point. Uh, please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything. I'll always come back to you. I look forward to seeing you in part two, where we're going to start from question number 15.